Watching Lodge, which if you take it out of uh, the key times, um, you actually can get it at quite a reasonable price. We had some fantastic outings around Aberdeen and Aberdeenshire. So I'll hand over now to, to Laurie, who's going to um, talk you through what you can do around Aberdeenshire. So thank you. Thank you, Karen. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Laurie Scott. I'm the head of uh, business marketing for Visit Aberdeenshire. So we are uh, the, the, the regional tourist board for this part of, of the northeast of Scotland. So it's not just Aberdeen that we cover as in the city. We also cover the region and um, it takes in a large part of our, our remit and our area. We're slightly different from other tourist boards where we don't operate a membership scheme. Um, we're fully independent in terms of we support everyone in the region in terms of travel trade and group and leisure and hotels. And it's all about promotion that way. And we're funded very luckily through local authorities and also through a private um, uh, a private enterprise within the region called Opportunity Northeast as well. So that allows us to really go out there and hit the marketplace. We also have a team of staff that do product development. So we are really engaged with ensuring that hotels, visitor attractions, other people that offer other tours are all what we call travel trade ready. So they understand what you're looking for. They understand your pricing modules. They understand how payments are made and bookings in advance so that we're geared up and we're ready to welcome the groups and also ease for you, ease for your customers and hopefully satisfied customers and you can either make some money or it works to what you're looking, looking to do. So I'm just going to share my screen. Feel free to ask any questions. Um, I know we've got 40 minutes or so, but feel free to ask me any questions as we go. Um, obviously, we will be at the show on the 19th of March. Um, my colleague Kirsten will be there um, and we'll be attending some various other shows around the UK, um, as well as some international events that you may be at. We're also taking um, doing some, some work with some of the publications, so you'll be able to get more of a glimpse of, of what we have and what we offer. Um, pretty much, as I've said, questions, then please come to me. And if you've got any questions afterwards or wish to get in touch with myself before the show, then please, you can get my details from, from Karen. Um, I'm happy to share them, it's not a problem. So I'm just gonna try and share my screen now. Just confirming that that's all working, guys. Yes. Yep. Yeah, okay. Uh, so there we go. We'll visit Aber so Aberdeen share there. Um, this is one of the most um, iconic pictures. A lot of the, including our national tourist board, both visit Britain and visit Scotland, use this castle, and um, it's the Notter Castle. Uh, which is a, a visitor attraction just site outside the city of Aberdeen, right in the northeast. Um, so first slide here. Um, for those of you who've not been to Aberdeen or have not been to Aberdeenshire, it's very easy to get to and easy to explore. You can see here a snapshot of, of the actual region and where we sit up in the northeast of Scotland. Um, the city centre is six miles from the airport, should you choose to fly or customers choose to fly. Um, we are, I would estimate it about two and a half hour train ride, uh, two and a half hour, three hour drive from Edinburgh and Glasgow. Uh, we are about an hour and a half ride or an hour's tra travel from Inverness. So again, we get a lot of operators combining Inverness and that part of the world, uh, uh, Speyside in, into Aberdeen. Um, we are known as Castle Country. And we have over, I think it's 100 castles within the region, um, historic castles throughout the, 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 um, the region. Obviously, the most famous is Barmoral. It's been the holiday home for the royal family for well over 100 years. So, you know, we like to think if they're happy holidaying and exploring the region, then why shouldn't you and your customers do that as well? Um, obviously, we're known as well for whiskey. Some of the most famous whiskey distilleries are on our doorstep. The city of Aberdeen, for those of you who haven't been, we're on the coast and there's actually a beach within the city. The city is very compact, it's easy to walk around, and I will go into more detail later on cultural attractions and things that we have within the city as well. Um, we're also part of Cairngorm National Park, so on one side we have Aviemore and Cairngorms, which you'll, you'll know about, but on the other side is ours and part of um, Royal Deeside and that historic area and um, activities within there as well. 
We're also the, the, um, part of the ferry route. So some of you may have used the ferry or groups using the ferry to go to Orkland and, Orkney and Shetland. And um, the ferry departs from Aberdeen Harbour, which is right in the city centre um, on a daily basis in the evening and returns early in the morning. So we're on a route, we're on the route for that as well, which works extremely well. Um, Aberdeen itself is a really compact city. It's the third biggest city in, Brit uh, in Britain, in, um, in Scotland, um, obviously Glasgow, Edinburgh, and then Aberdeen. It's really famous in terms of uh, historic value. Um, Aberdeen University of Aberdeen is the oldest university in Scotland. Um, it's a big university town and also has a lot of infrastructure, visitor attractions and everything that would go with a traditional um, Victorian sort of built, built city. In terms of museums, we have the Art Gallery, which is down there to my left. It was actually shut for three years for um, a massive refurbishment. You can see at the top there, they've added a new um, roof um, or a new, sorry, another third floor, which again is more uh, for the artifacts there, but also has a nice cafe and restaurant and an outside dining and coffee area as well, which views over the city. Um, we also have the Gordon Highlanders Museum in the city which is a, a, a regimental museum dedicated to obviously a, a famous regiment, the Royal Gordon Highlanders, but also just in ter terms of um, military and military within the United Kingdom and how as well that was represented, not just with the Royal family in Aberdeenshire, but also throughout the world wars and other historic battles and, and things that they've been involved in. Um, we have the Maritime Museum. Um, Aberdeen, as you will know, um, has a rich maritime history, not just in modern times in terms of the energy sector and oil and gas, but also in terms of uh, fishing and other previous days from shipping and its connectivity uh, to Scandinavia and other European markets. So there is a museum there dedicated towards Aberdeen's maritime history. It does touch on because people are always fascinated about the oil and gas sector and it has um, information and artifacts and its various bits about oil rigs, platforms, shipping, and how oil and changed Aberdeen's uh, value, let's just say, um, from the 60s through 70s and 80s, and how it has changed and shaped the, the, the city in terms of finding oil and oil exploration, and then now moving on into modern energy and wind farm and how all of that works. But also touching on um, the, the harbour, Aberdeen Harbour is one of the oldest limited companies in, uh, in the United Kingdom. So again, it shows the historic sort of maritime past um, just with fishing and shipping um, within, within the city. But the city's harbour is actually within the city centre of Aberdeen. So again, right next to the Maritime Museum, but you get a nice look and feel with the, the ferry coming in and various other exploration ships and cruise ships and stuff. So it's a busy harbour, but it's not industrial because it's all just shipping and, and um, rather than freight, it's supply vessels and vessels going over to Norway um, and wind turbine machinery. So a lot of people find it very fascinating because it's not just your usual harbour and it's right in town as well. And um, we have very close links to, to Scandinavia because of the, how close we are. So there's a lot of freight and um, Norwegian ships coming in and out as well, which is good. Um, the, the city is split into two areas. We have the, the main part of the city and then we have an area called Old Aberdeen, which is where the university is. So that's down to my bottom right which is King's College, which is um, Aberdeen University. Again, it's a very it's a preserved area. It um, has a, the St. Macris Cathedral there, which is open to um, um, visitors, which is free of charge. Um, we also can do walking tours within that area. And there's also the small fish, fishing village of Fati, which is down on, on, on the coast as well and it, within the city. Um, cruise business, if that is of interest to you or you have groups coming off cruise ships or crew, people on cruise or domestic UK cruise, we're building a new cruise terminal and um, it's one of the biggest infrastructure, commercial infrastructure harbour projects um, in the United Kingdom or Europe. It will be open um, just for completion in October 2022, but currently there is the city centre, obviously harbour, that's facility that has always been there. Um, and this will allow us to take bigger ships and bigger vessels. Currently, just now, we work more with um, explorer vessels and National Geographic type vessels and things like that. Um, going back into the region, you will find the region is of traditional towns and villages. Uh, really good and interesting scenery for things like coach travel, 
coach tours and making a day of it within Aberdeenshire rather than within the city. Um, we have 165 miles of coastline, um, so you can actually get, you can actually see or understand the breadth of how big the region is. Um, and we've been named by National Geographic as one of the most outstanding coastlines in the world. Um, it is breathtaking scenery within the coast. And then we can go into what we call areas, uh, Royal D side, which would be the area of Barmoro, um, which obviously is the royal home, uh, the, the, um, the, the royal's holiday home, um, and Ballater, which is known as um, the, one of the only villages with the most royal warrants um, in the United Kingdom. Royal D side is very accessible from Aberdeen. It basically we follows um, the train line that was built by Queen Victoria or put in place there to take um, the family traditionally from Aberdeen all the way to Ballater, um, which has the, the, the line is no longer in use and is now a walking route, the D side walking route. But from there, from Aberdeen out to Balmoral, it would take about an hour, an hour and 20 minutes by coach. But there's a lot to do on the way in terms of product, in terms of nice scenery, and then you can finish up at Bomoro, which is is open uh, obviously with the, when the royal family aren't in residence um, in the summer period. Um, the other area that we have out that way is the Cairngorms National Park. Again, can be tied in with various visitor attractions that are out there, such as Royal Loch Nagar, one of the most famous whiskey distilleries. And then there's a lot of walking um, if groups are looking for that. Specifically, I must emphasize on the D side way, which is a walking route that goes from Aberdeen. Um, out to, to uh, Ballater, again, following the old train line. It's, um, it has been paved, um, it's, it's cut back, it's not just a, a, a rough terrain walking route, it's very accessible. Most of it you can cycle on, but it's safe, clean, easy, tidy, and it's completely flat the whole way. Um, Scotland's castle trails. So Aberdeen is home to 263 castles. So we actually have more castles per acre than anywhere else in the British Isles. Obviously, Balmoral will be the famous. We have a lot of National Trust product within the, the Northeast region. So the majority of the castles are managed um, as in the visitor attractions by the National Trust or Historic Scotland as well, which works extremely well for us in terms of their value proposition, but how they work and work uh, obviously with group and tour operators and understand the market and understand the product. Um, we do have several itinerary, itineraries that are castle and gardens that actually work its way out and through Royal Deeside or north of Aberdeen that would allow you to encompass uh, or give you ideas and suggestions on um, castles and garden routes. Um, obviously, there's, as with anything within, within Scotland as well, there's a lot of castles that have been used in movies, inspired a lot of films, um, and they're all there to see and open, open to the public. Um, things that we have new in terms of new product. Um, one of our biggest selling products just now is what we call our product is known as the farm experience. So it's Aberdeenshire Highland cattle. So you can see the iconic Aberdeenshire Highland, Highland beef, Highland cattle. And then this was a farmer who uh, bred the cattle, not just for beef, but also for show um, uh, um, in terms of uh, breeding. But she actually now offers a package that you can go and literally meet the cows she talks about the breed, but it's people always want, people are fascinated by Highland cows and she's found that this experience and her farm shop and the afternoon tea or the catering offer now lends itself to, to group excursions and works extremely, extremely well, um, where it's a case of being up close and meeting the cows, um, touching the cows, brushing the cows, that experience, but also learning a bit more about their stock, um, their, their history, um, the breeding, the breed, um, and then just generally people want to have pictures taken and then work, work, with, the, work, um, work with the cows. It's suitable for groups 10 to, to 48. It's on its way in terms of the, the location of this farm experience on the Royal D side route. We find it very popular with groups that are going out doing Royal D side, stopping there, um, and then moving on to, to Carathas Castle and some of the other National Trust product, products on their way out to, to Balmoral Ballater area. Um, we have a mass um, outdoor experiences. Um, obviously, within Aberdeen, it, it's the major city, but everything else, especially within the region, is outdoors. 
um, we're really that, that that's the, the area is really taken more by outdoors and coastline and we're getting a lot now of um, operators looking for photography uh, walking more um, soft leisure rather than hard leisure in terms of biking and skiing and mountain biking and uh, we have a successful company now that does wildlife photography tours so out and about taking photographs but obviously knowing where uh, wildlife will be um, and, and working that way as well. Again, these things can all be bespoke and be, be made tailor-made. Um, again, whiskey obviously is big within our region. Um, Brewdog uh, beer as well um, is big within our region and that is, was founded in Aberdeen. Um, their factories in Ellen and they have their very first bar in the city centre of Aberdeen where we're finding again, a lot of people are really interested in this and didn't realise or don't realise that the Brewdog story started started here in Aberdeen. But again, like most places as well, there's a huge gin, gin craze that started over the last couple of years. And Aberdeen is no different to anywhere else where a lot of the, the distilleries and uh, various people have worked within the whiskey industry have started up their own gin distillery. Um, so we have Lost Log, Lost Log Spirit School, which is out in Royal Deeside, again, offering making your own spirits and spending the day there or the afternoon there. And then we have one in Aberdeen, which is the city of Aberdeen Distillery, which offers gin schools, discovery tour and master classes. Um, in terms of culture and heritage, obviously we touched on within our city, obviously we have the Hart Gallery, the Maritime Museum and various other cultural artifacts. If we move further afield, um, sort of touching more modern culture, culture is Peterhead Prison. Um, some of you may know or remember Peterhead Prison um, was featured 40 years ago when the SAS were actually called in to rescue um, a member of staff who was um, pulled hostage on the roof. Um, but again, people are fascinated with prisons. The prison obviously is no longer working, um, but it's turned into a museum and uh, as a fully guided experience to um, immerse yourself there within the facility and walk around. Um, we found that um, over the years, this has grown in popularity and has become one of our major visitor attractions. And there's actually one Visit Scotland awards um, in terms for its quality and how it goes about and how, how it works. Yeah, Peterhead is on our coastal route. So it's in north of Aberdeen rather than going on the D side route. But you can easily find yourself going up with that way and combining with other castle tours and garden tours within that region. And also the Lighthouse Museum which is at the top in Fraserburgh, right up in the top north of Scotland, or top, top north of Aberdeen. Going back, coming back down, um, another new attraction for us, or has opened up now to the public and groups, is the Braemar Highland Games Centre. So the Braemar Highland Games Centre is based in, is in Braemar, and actually where uh, the Braemar Gathering, which is the Highland Games, one of the most famous Highland Games, um, in Scotland, where the royal family attend every year. Um, so there is a, a museum there now, which has received a beneficiary money from um, Prince Charles and has now turned into a, a proper working um, museum. So not only can the guests like, experience uh, the history of the Braemar Gathering, it is the only Highland Games Museum in Scotland, um, but it is also actually at the facility where the royal family attend every year. So it's, it's iconic, um, you can be self-guided or there is a guide that can actually take you around and then go through everything there and with the artifacts and everything that's um, as part of that museum. Accommodation, um, this is a big thing for us in Aberdeen. Um, I will be open and honest with you that um, over 10 years ago, seven years ago, People didn't wish to come to Aberdeen because, especially within the travel trade industry, the value proposition was not there. The city was there uh, booming in the oil and gas industry and anyone within the tour operating world that tried to negotiate and try to work in Aberdeen found it extremely difficult in terms of future rates and the hotels were all buoyant um, and didn't want to really work within the leisure industry. That has completely changed and has gone full circle and it's nothing to do with the, the COVID variant. This is just because we have an oversupply of accommodation and the oil industry, energy industry has moved slightly in terms of how it goes about its work. And the, 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 the oversupply of hotels in Aberdeen has now transformed itself into a value proposition in terms of from one star to five star of what we have in terms of quality, but we have an abundance of supply 
and now the hotels are all open to working with um, the operators in terms of group business, which is fantastic news for us. Um, we have over 5,000 rooms uh, in the city, which is a major accolade for a city that's so small. And we have major brands, as you would imagine, it's an international cosmopolitan city like Aberdeen. But we also have a lot of private brands, a lot of privately family owned hotels tend to find that the, the, the private hotels are in the four star market and they're very open to working on group business. And they, we find that they're very flexible because they're not answerable to, to yield managers and other managers or someone in London controlling what they can do and when they can sell their bedrooms. So we see that as another you know, bonus of coming to Aberdeen and working within our region in terms of the private offering that we have, but also the, the abundance of quality accommodation that we have, specifically within the summer months when you may struggle in certain areas in Edinburgh, Perth, um, Inverness especially. And we're finding now a lot of operators are using us as a base, working their way through Royal D side, Murray Space side, are going to Inverness for the day and coming back and using Aberdeen that way. We have a number of hotels that are suitable for groups and FIT. Um, and then obviously we have a lot of unique type properties and some of the national trust properties that you can stay in for smaller groups. Um, we have developed um, over the last 12 months, what we call a product guide. So the product guide is our travel trade guide, our travel trade directory. But as we're not membership driven, we've really moved away from advertising and actually you know having only members within the product guide so we worked with a number of operators asking them what they wanted and what they liked to see a region and how they went about like offering what they had rather than just a usual travel trade directory with sort of advertising and bits about that you can do this and that the next thing so we've created a wholesale directory and um, no one gets into our product guide unless they have a bookable experience and have been through our Travel Trade Ready program. So after, or I will share this, it's on our website, the Travel Trade uh, Guide is thematic. So we put it into food and drink, castles and gardens, cultural attractions, operators obviously within the region as in coaches and other folks that can help, and then all the hotels. So you will see when you have this or you've oversight of the guide that you see, receive a snapshot of an experience or a castle, what they offer, what they can do, and then a click through to what we call the product information sheet rather than going through to their website. And then it's a detailed sheet that lets you know what their seasonality, the type of groups that they take, how long the tour would take, the costs, and a brief explanation on their terms and conditions just to give you an oversight. And then it gives the contact person, so the trade person or the manager or the person that was responsible within that organization um, to get in touch with along with their email address and the phone number. So that, that's the way that, that we're operating. We actually own um, the guide and it's not published every year. We do it consistently. So as people are working and we find new product that's been developed, then we put it onto the guide. We own the guide. We own the software that we develop it with. So we're not waiting on a print run and doing various bits. It's actually put in and updated in, in, in live, lifetime, real time. We've also um, re configured how we go about in terms of our itineraries and suggested itineraries as well. So by the end of the um, February, we'll have six new itineraries that we've developed that again are suggestions that give you the idea of what can be done within the sort of pockets of Aberdeen and also within the region. They are all dovetailed within the product guide and they're also dovetailed into thematic order as well. So again, it works almost like a wholesale way where it gives you the ideas of what perhaps you can do and how you can perhaps pick and mix and give you comfort of what potentially can you do within the region, whether that's for the day, two days, or coming in from other parts of Scotland. Um, we're very much um, want to be hands-on and, and help with you, yourselves. Um, it's not just a case of this is what we've got and just get in touch with um, the, the, the attractions or the area or the, the hotels within the region. We're really here to help you. We want to help you. We understand that we are quite a, a new destination in terms of um, group travel, especially within the UK. Um, and we understand that perhaps some people would be a bit um, light touch in terms of, okay, I've never been there before. What is there to do there? Um, I'm like un unsure of whether this would work for my groups. Whereas we're very much open to say, well, we're open to have a conversation. 
We're open to have webinars with your customers, with you there, to actually talk through things that can be done to give reassurance, to invite you up to come and have a look, to come and have a look around the region as well. Um, we can help with itinerary planning and development. Um, we can help sourcing quotes, or if you've got an issue with people not coming back, or things that you're just kind of unsure about, then we can help with that as well. Um, obviously, we can make introductions um, to accommodation, attractions, restaurants, anything that you wish to do. We're ha happy to do that, delighted to do that. Um, we have a brand new content library uh, with images and video on our YouTube channel. All the images um, can be used, so they can be used within your brochures or your own uh, promotion or marketing materials. So anything that uh, was there that was unsure or not licensed has all been removed. And the new images have all been taken and produced and we have like a travel trade bank of images that will help with promotion and um, they're all inspiring refreshing new content and um, obviously we have our travel trade section on the website that the, the, our product guide is there to look at download go on in real time and then the itineraries will be there as well um, for you to, to use or to, to, to look and try and help with things as well and then for some of the bigger operators or for other folks as well we do a lot of sales training so it's more for their reservations teams or for just teams in general as a product development, what is there to do, just sort of reassurance in, in Aberdeen and the region and any questions that they may have. Um, my colleague Kirsten will be at the, the show um, in March. Um, by all means, any questions that you have or if it's of interest um, or you have a customer or a group or an organizer or groups that are looking to come, then she'd be delighted to meet with you. Um, if you can't go to the show or you can't meet with her, then we're happy to do a virtual call like this or a, a telephone call or anything that may suit you. Um, or she may be at other shows or quite happy to come and meet you at your place of work as well to do that. Um, we really value your, your business. It's been a very, very tough time for everyone, not just personally, but just in terms of organising things and getting about and getting out and about and just getting a bit more out and about further, further afield. So anything we can help to try and make that happen and then make your experience of coming to our region a lot easier or trying to make it a lot easier, then please don't hesitate in getting in touch with us. Thank you. Is there any questions? Or... If you look, have a look, uh, Kevin's asked one in the chat box. Um, and also his great, great grandfather was in the um, Golden Highlanders. Here we go. Yeah, it's it's a really famous regiment. People don't realize. And then they go to the museum and they're like, all right, this is a bit different and everything there. Um, they've recently just created a, a World War One trench as well um, outside in the garden and it all works and how it was sort of obviously how, how things were uh, in France. So um, if you're ever up, Kevin, <laughs> you also had a question about the um one of the experiences. Let's see, chat. Yes, yeah. So with the um Gracie's farm, they can do smaller groups. Yep, no problem at all. It probably works with smaller groups a bit better. So she's used to doing with some of the big operators and then splitting or she works with sort of smaller yeah private groups that come along yeah very much so yeah this is one of the biggest uh, attractions that or one of our success stories that she's come through our product development and um now has over the last couple of years even during covid has excelled um just in terms of her offering and the interest you know people find it extremely interesting and um, more so than she thought and what we thought. Right. Um, could you stop sharing the screen, please? Yeah. That's brilliant. Have we got any more questions? And Sarah, lovely to see you on here, or not that I can see you, but um, thank you very much for your feedback. Um, I think everybody's found this fascinating. I certainly have, even though I've been there, I've learned a lot today. Yeah. Uh, any, any other questions? Laurie, Laurie, is there anything else you wanted to add? No, I just emphasize, though, thank you for your time and anything that you do need, then please just um, get in touch with us. As I said, we, the way we operate, we, we're, we're sort of embracing and we want to help. Um, try to, you know, we've spent a lot of time working with operators to understand their business and what they need from a tourist board um, or what they would like to see from a tourist board. Um, and hopefully we can um, offer that. 
And if we can't, then get in touch and, and we'll do our level best to try and make that happen for you. That's brilliant. I don't think we've got any more questions. Um, oh, yes, no. Kevin, do you want to unmute? Yeah. Um, hi. Thanks. That was, that was really, really great. Very useful. Um, what we find is we, we deal a lot with international students in the UK at university, okay. and particularly the Chinese visit Scotland. What they do is they fly up and they'll get a small group together, as I said, about six to eight. They hire a couple of cars and then go sort of touring around. And what we see on social media is obviously they miss a whole load of places and attractions and things. So you mentioned the itineraries you're putting together. Yeah. Have you got any that are sort of tailored to people doing like their own sort of self-drive tour yeah. around? Yeah, definitely. The itinerary, the way we've done them is kind of like a pick and mix, uh, but it still works in a, a route, so to speak. And it gives you the opportunity to go, right, okay, I can do a bit of this. So well, that's a suggestion there. And then at the end of each day as well, so to speak, there's suggestion of accommodation from good you know, high end to non and some restaurants and things like that as well. Or why don't you yeah. and some fun facts as well. So it allows everyone, uh, the people following the itinerary or looking to follow it or the operator to work out an itinerary from there as well. Yeah, they're, yeah. they're a very mixed group. I mean, some sometimes the Chinese want high end luxury accommodation because yeah. they want that experience and you know they'll put it all over their social media in china other times they're just looking for budget stuff for a small group of friends uh, and uh, and things like that so we come in really with trying to sort of show them the things that they they ought to go and see and then obviously working with the attractions and stuff and accommodation providers to try and generate a good price for them and you know we, we pick up our, our bit on the margin with that yeah no that's great we're happy to help and again I guess like one of the messages we want to get across is that we are a um, kind of relatively unknown destination. A lot of people don't even realize that the Balmoral connection, the Royal connection, um, yeah. but the fact as well that there's value, it's extreme value for money. Yeah, the Balmoral and, thing is, is a big is a big plus for the for the Chinese market, yeah. especially with the you know the Platinum Jubilee going on with, with Windsor at the moment as well. Yeah. Um, the other thing, just just which you may not be aware of, and 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 to pass on to your attraction partners is that whilst you or I might look on TripAdvisor and, and things like that, in China, they've got about seven or eight apps that are, are the equivalent to this. Yeah. So the key thing is to get people to visit and then get them to post about their experience on those apps in China, and that will generate tons and tons of business. You get a good review there. Every Chinese student will want to want to go and, sure. and other, you know, their parents come and visit as well and things like that. And that's where we try to, to help, um, you know, get involved. But we, we haven't got any Scottish destinations on our, our student website yet. It's, we, you know, we're building it. I do it in my spare time. So I'll, I'll drop you an email, um, you know, later on this week and we can perhaps uh, schedule a, uh, you know, a meeting together. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm happy to help with these things as well, just with content that you can use and the images that are just, you know, straight away, you can cut and paste and drop it on. Yeah, yeah fantastic. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, Kevin. Any other questions? Okay, I think um, we can say that we're, we're, we're coming to the end on this one. Thank you all very much. Um, this is my last one on the excursions week this week um, because I've got a um, couple of other meetings. I will be at uh, British and Ireland Marketplace tomorrow in London. Um, but it's been great seeing you all and uh, chatting to everybody and hearing all the questions. And um, as I say, this afternoon we've got 1066 country great new um, things there, British Tea Museum. Um, and then tomorrow, visit Portsmouth. And the final one of the week, visit Richmond, which will lead us nicely into excursions at Twickenham Stadium uh, in March. So um, if I don't see you before, hope to see you at excursions in March. And thank you very much, Laurie. Um, it's been a great uh, presentation today. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, okay. guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye bye. 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 Thanks very much.